These hearings of the Subcommittee on Narcotics, Terrorism, and International Operations of the Foreign Relations Committee will come to order. I was uh, informed that Senator D'Amato is on his way from the uh, airport. He was coming down and is slightly delayed. I was trying to allow him time to be able to be here uh, for the beginning. Uh, let me just make a couple of brief comments by way of introduction to this week and where we are going and where we have been. Six weeks ago, this subcommittee held the first set of hearings on international drug trafficking. And at the beginning of those hearings, I indicated the literally frightening degree to which I believed that narco trafficking and the narco dollar has permeated the everyday affairs of countries that we deal with. I also stressed at that time that in my opinion, <clears throat> this was a threat that was defining itself as really more serious than many of those with which we have been preoccupied in the daily dialogue of this country these past few years. In some ways, some people may feel that we've learned and heard too much about drugs lately. But drugs are literally tearing at the fabric of American life. Uh, they are killing adult and child. They're undermining our institutions. They're filling our jails. They're depleting our national energy and our creativity. And they are costing us billions of dollars in various social costs. In recent weeks, we've come to understand even more as we've watched events unfold in Panama about the scope of the criminal enterprise. We've seen how it threatens whole countries and how it upsets the stability of an already very fragile hemisphere. These hearings continue today in an effort to further shed light on this scourge, to better understand its scope and its nature so that we can better determine what we're going to do about it, if in fact we're really going to respond to it. So we begin today an examination that picks up where we left off. Uh, we will look at additional countries. We will also revisit Panama briefly with Jose Blandon in order to literally pick up where we left off and to review where the situation is today, as well as to touch on some matters which we were not able because of time constraints to go into during the last session. Uh, it seems to me that uh, through all of the exercise of the last week and of the events of the last few weeks, it's clear that one thing leaps out at all of us and it's a tragic uh, recognition and that is that despite all the rhetoric, uh, despite a good beginning at education in this country, despite a congressional law passed last year, uh, despite all of the talk about a war on drugs, there has not been a real war. And more pointedly, the drugs have not been the priority that public officials have said they were. That will become even more clear as we examine not only what has happened in other countries, but as we examine how we ourselves have made decisions that have put us where we are. And I think that will be one of the most interesting parts of these hearings. We have a great many witnesses that we will hear from. We will hear from Jose Blandon. We will hear from former ambassador to Costa Rica, Francis McNeil. We will hear from a number of people who have been incarcerated or some who are not incarcerated, who have themselves been involved in both the uh, narcotics trafficking as well as some of the other efforts which have resulted in the problems that I've talked about. Uh, Senator Bob Graham of Florida uh, has a specific interest in Haiti and has asked that I postpone certain portions of Haiti until he returns from a trip to uh, Moscow. I have agreed to do that and we will touch uh, on Haiti in the course of this week but we will complete uh, Haiti upon his return. In addition, Senator Mitch McConnell, who is the ranking member of this committee, uh, has business in his state and is unable to be here for a good portion of it. Therefore, we have agreed to postpone a part of the reappearance of Ramon uh, uh, Million Rodriguez and others until Monday of next week. But Mr. Rodriguez will nevertheless appear this week as to certain matters 
that are of importance to the general inquiry. Uh, finally, uh, uh, Jose Blandon is uh, back with us, and I uh, am delighted to welcome you back, Mr. Blandon. We are going to, for those who were not here previously, let me explain that we have simultaneous translation that has been provided us um, by the State Department, and we will uh, proceed so that for those of you who are in the audience who wish to uh, uh, share the translation as we go along, there are headsets available to everybody, uh, and one channel will be English uh, to Spanish, the other is Spanish to English, uh, simultaneous and we will proceed uh, through that means, although, Mr. Blandone, uh, you and I have conversed uh, on many occasions in English. If you feel you would like to uh, do so at this time, uh, we obviously invite you to do so at any time. I would ask you if uh, you would stand, please, so that I could re-swear you. Would you raise your right hand, please? And do you promise uh, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Blandon. Would you please state your full name again and identify yourself for the record? Mi nombre es Jose Blandon Castillo. My name Castillo. is Jose Blandon Castillo. The chairman is trying to get the correct channel here. Which one am I? On? Ms. Blandon, uh, Blandon, you are the same Jose Blandon who testified here before this committee about six weeks ago. Incorrecto. Yes. Now, Mr. Blandon, at that time you told us a considerable amount about the specifics of General Noriega's involvement in narcotics trafficking. Uh, we did not, however, discuss a great deal about the money laundering process itself, nor did we discuss some of the involvements with other countries, although we did touch on uh, aspects of General Noriega's involvement in gun running and his uh, links to Cuba. Today we would like to explore uh, a number of uh, new areas, areas which you personally did not go into, but uh, specifically I want to pursue them because they are important in terms of corroborating the testimony of other witnesses. Let me just interrupt uh, my own uh, questions here to welcome Senator D'Amato. Senator D'Amato, as I explained to you, Senator McConnell is the ranking member who is not here. Senator D'Amato is the ranking member of the Senate Drug Caucus. He has had a long uh, participation in the uh, investigation with respect to Panama and a long interest uh, in this area, and I'm delighted uh, at his uh, help he has been extremely helpful, both his staff and he himself, uh, to our investigative efforts, and I'm delighted to welcome him here uh, again for this week. Senator D'Amato, do you want to open? Let me just let you move over and let Senator move over. Well, that's, 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 Mr. Chairman, uh, let me uh, say that when two months ago you fell at first held these hearings, there was a great deal of skepticism. I heard many people uh, approach me and, and even some of our colleagues with respect to what the useful purpose would be served. It's my belief, Mr. Chairman, that you have demonstrated quite clearly and convincingly the immense uh, power and the corrupting influence of the international drug cartel. And indeed, uh, we owe uh, this committee and yourself personally a debt of gratitude for persisting in not just one or two days uh, of headline grabbing, but the day in and day out work that you and your staff have continued behind the scenes in deposing the various witnesses and laying the format so that one can so clearly demonstrate what is taking place and, and maybe a, the dawn of awakening is striking our, our communities and some of our leaders, I would hope, as we continue to hear of the incredible violence that breaks out in community after community throughout, 
throughout our land. And Mr. Chairman, let me suggest that it is directly tied to this international drug cartel. Let me also suggest to the doubting Thomases who initially, uh, and by the way, let's put on the record, uh, those in the defense uh, community and establishment, those in the intelligence community and establishment, the old boy network, who were so quick to denigrate anyone who could possibly in any way uh, cast uh, dispersions upon maybe why they have not uh, risen to the scene, why they had not identified the drug uh, um, ring as a very serious one, why they were dealing, for example, for so many years with Noriega and others that, that your testimony and facts have, have uh, uh, demonstrated. And so uh, Mr. Blandone, whose credibility has been established without doubt, was first characterized as some kind of power-seeking uh, person who had political aspirations. We had other witnesses whose motivations were questioned. And now, uh, that in some cases, Jose Blandon's prophecies as to how Noriega not only operated, but would operate in the future, and has been borne out why the, those critics have seemed to somewhat uh, quiet down and, and melt away. Um, I would suggest, though, that uh, instead of them attempting to protect turf and what their past actions were or should have been, that they would become more concerned in the business of the people how we remedy the situations that exist. Mr. Chairman, I have a, a lengthier statement, but, I, but we have a, a lot of business at hand, and I'd ask that I be permitted to submit the, the uh, statement as I've read it in, in its entirety, and I look forward to working with you in the, uh, in the days and weeks and months ahead. Well, thank you very much, Senator D'Amato. Uh, without objection, your full testimony will be made part of the record, and I appreciate your comments very, very much. I might add that uh, staff here, led by Jack Blum and Kathleen Smith, uh, have done just a superb job, uh, totally overworked, without resources, and uh, it's really remarkable what uh, they've been able to, to put together, and I think this week will help to corroborate that. There will be some fascinating testimony uh, and some chilling testimony. Uh, some of which uh, will cause us, I think, to seriously reevaluate our effort and to come to a new understanding about uh, where and how we have to uh, make changes in order to deal with this problem. Uh, let me also remind people, uh, while this is not a court of law and we are not subject to rules of evidence, uh, uh, specifically with respect to hearsay at ever, I have, I have endeavored in the first week of hearings to try to be uh, stricter than one might be usually. Uh, we are not uh, trying to uh, uh, paint a story that uh, is not without at least uh, significant circumstantial linkages where there is not direct evidence. And I think uh, uh, where there may be some doubts in one person's testimony by the end of the week, where there have been several of uh, those doubts uh, will be minimized. Uh, Mr. Blandone, I want to remind you, as I will remind witnesses through the week, uh, we're not looking for prearranged or any kind of specific answers. We want the truth. We want to know what's happening. We don't want things embellished. We don't want uh, things shaded for any pol political side whatsoever. Uh, these hearings have been dedicated to uh, letting the chips fall where they may, and that is precisely uh, what we're going to do, is let the chips fall where they may. What we want are facts, and what you have heard, know, uh, and, and uh, while I will accept, obviously, testimony that you have heard other people talking about and so forth, because that's the nature uh, of a hearing. Now, Mr. Blandone, first, before we move to discussion of the meddling cartel influence, before we discuss the money laundering, which we want to go into with you more, and before we discuss uh, some aspects of the relationship with Fidel Castro, and finally, some of the aspects of Japan and its links to uh, General Noriega, I would like to ask you quickly, because you are here, and this is a critical moment, uh, on your perceptions of where we are with respect to, to the process of Panama today and the removal of General Noriega. Uh, you and I have met, along with Senator D'Amato and others, over the course of these past weeks. Uh, you've been meeting with the administration. The opposition has been working diligently. Uh, but I'm concerned 
Secretary Schultz is in the Middle East. Uh, Defense Secretary Carlucci is in Morocco. The President is on the West Coast. Uh, there seems to be a dispersal of energy and of leadership. And these are critical moments. Uh, we are either on the line with respect to Panama or we are not. On the front pages of the New York Times today, as well as in recent days, we've been reading what Senator D'Amato and I asserted last week at a press conference, which is that there is a major division within this administration with respect to policy. And at the outset of our approach on General Noriega, uh, we asserted very clearly that the past relationship of the CIA, the DIA, the Southcom, uh, the military network to General Noriega is part of what has emboldened him, part of what has allowed him to be able to believe that he can get away with what he's been able to do. And I fear that uh, the ambivalence we read on the front pages of our newspapers of administration policy merely reinforces in him the very perceptions which have led him to hold on in the first place. And so I'm disturbed about policy. Senator D'Amato is disturbed about policy. Uh, this may be uh, one of the most critical moments that we've had to seize that is being lost. Uh, it took uh, the protection of some potentially graduating doctors in the Grenada uh, to call for action. Uh, it uh, took a lot less than that with respect to seven and a half years of effort against Nicaragua. Uh, and I think the question has to be asked why it is when a drug baron of the importance of General Noriega, who has robbed the people of their democracy, is just sitting there stubbing his nose at the people of this country, as well as at uh, a country which has indicted him for drug running, uh, what is our policy? And I think that's a legitimate question. So in light of that opening statement and those fears that I express about where we are, I'd like to ask you your perceptions of where we are in Panama and what is happening. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Senator D'Amato. In the first place, I would like to state that since the last time that I was here, in the hearings, not only in my country, but also in other countries, important events have taken place that have confirmed the seriousness of the drug problem and of a general strategy that the Medellin cartel and its associates have unleashed in Central America, the Caribbean, and the rest of Latin America. In particular, the Panamanian situation at present is a reflection of the extent to which the forces of the drugs and the extent to which a group of military, so corrupt military and civilian officials and extend the fist of their power against a people. In the Republic of Panama, Mr. Chairman, the people in general repudiate the Noriega government. The church has stated its objection to his presence in Panama. The business sectors have stated their objection to Noriega's presence in Panama. The working sectors have expressed themselves against Noriega also. A great political alliance has been forged that includes opposition parties and government parties to struggle against General Noriega. So, that the only thing that guides and maintains Noriega in power is force. But even within those armed forces, in recent weeks, there was a military uprising that clearly demonstrated that even within the defense forces, there are serious problems for Noriega. The situation of the Republic of Panama, Mr. Chairman, is extremely serious. The economic measures have obviously had their impact and have, for the first time, endangered the Noriega government. I think that it has been effective. Our country has paid a high price, but I have no doubt that it is willing to continue to pay this price. Nonetheless, there is a fundamental fact that is of concern to we Panamanians because our people have paid a great price in terms of sacrifice. All of us have risked our well-being, our families, our children for a struggle for democracy and peace in Panama.
Nuestro país ve con preocupación que el gobierno de los Estados Unidos aún no define una política clara, precisa, que defienda la seguridad de nuestro país. Nuestro país ve con preocupación que el gobierno de los Estados Unidos aún no define una política clara, precisa, que defienda la seguridad de nuestro país. Nuestro país ve con preocupación que el gobierno de los Estados Unidos aún no define una política clara, precisa, que defienda la seguridad de nuestro país. Nuestro país ve con preocupación que el gobierno de los Estados Unidos aún no define una política clara, precisa, que defienda la seguridad de nuestro país. Nuestro país ve con preocupación que el gobierno de los Estados Unidos aún no define una política clara, precisa, que defienda la seguridad de nuestro país. Nuestro país ve con preocupación que el gobierno de los Estados Unidos aún no define una política clara, precisa, que defienda la seguridad de nuestro país. Nuestro país ve con la situación panameña, For us, then, the Panamanian situation is a situation in which the lack of decision-making in some parts of the U.S. government may make difficult and even more uh, dangerous the national interests of our country and the national interests of the United States. Nonetheless, I think that in recent weeks, as a result of these hearings and these discussions, en el nivel de conciencia de los Estados Unidos y su dirigente. Increased awareness in the United States and in its political leaders of a problem. Reciente. In the recent past, Estados Unidos no ha estado consciente. The United States has not been aware of the extent of danger represented by the strategy unleashed by the Medellin cartel in the early 1980s. Creo que ha habido I think that there has been a lack of knowledge of the real danger that they represent to the United States. Y ellos evidencia hoy en mi país, is apparent today in my pero country, también se evidencia but it's also en los grandes rasgos y ligazón in entre strokes, Panamá, Noriega, in the link between Cuba, Panama, Panamá, Noriega, Cuba, the Haiti. Sandinistas, Haiti. Hace una semana, a el week ministro ago, de Justicia de Venezuela, the Venezuelan Minister of Justice was por estar involucrado en drogas. Had to step down because of involvement in drugs. Encontramos nosotros que durante el año pasado we find el incremento that last de la producción year, de droga the increase in drug production was 10%. En términos generales, in general, casi todos los países de América almost Latina, all of the countries of Latin America are in one way or another involved. De manera que la lucha en Panamá so that the struggle in Panama is not a struggle of only the Panamanian people. Para mí, el pueblo panameño ha tomado me, la decisión. The Panamanian que people have made a decision. I think that we will continue struggling. They will be difficult days. But it is strange. We find it strange that there is still not a defined policy with respect to Panama, Mr. Chairman. When you say, uh, Mr. Blandone, that uh, there isn't a defined policy, uh, today in the newspaper, President de Valle was quoted as saying uh, that he thought the current sanctions were enough and that they would do the job. Uh, do I understand that you disagree with that? I sort of. The problem of President Del Valle with the statements which you read in the New York Times based on the fact that Del Valle himself, because of his present situation, because he's isolated from the discussions and the happenings which are taking place. That is why we, last week... When you say isolated, you're referring to the fact that he is in hiding and at peril, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I'm isolation in the sense that he is not in contact with the rest of the country and that through the various political parties, through the various organizations have supported the president. In other words, he is hidden. He is in hiding and... Therefore, we discussed with the United States the manner of how to solve this problem, and for a week we have been awaiting a reply, and this reply has not yet been received. Let me turn, unless Senator D'Amato has any policy questions, I want to turn to the Medellin cartel, if I can. You, you talked, uh, last time we were here, you alluded, you do have questions? I don't want to change the subject if you wanted to pursue any policy questions. Well, Mr. Chairman, I think it's important uh, that we uh, get some kind of an understanding as to, uh, as to how the Panamanian Defense Forces and the people of Panama view what is taking place as a result of what might appear to be 
indecisive action on the part of, of the United States. I'd like to preface that uh, statement in question because I, I'd like to get Mr. Blandone's opinion if he believes that the Panamanian people are beginning to doubt uh, the credibility of the United States in its actions in dealing with Noriega or our resolve. Number one, that's a question I'd like to, to ask. And number two, I'd like to uh, ask Mr. Blandone if he feels that we have been sending mixed signals uh, to the Panamanian people and to those who look to the United States for help in, in getting rid of Noriega. Certainly, your last question. There is no doubt that the recent developments this past week have sent uh, signals to uh, General Noriega regarding the position of the United States regarding Panama. The feeling in my country regarding the United States is a feeling which is based on many years of friendship and cooperation, but our people also views with concern that the views with concern that the United States is abandoning it in a struggle which is not only in a Panamanian interest because thousands of dollars of drugs which come to the United States using the facilities which Noriega has created in Panama, they basically affect the youth of the United States. And the fight of our people is also a fight for the youth of the United States. Of course, it is true that in our country there is a concern, and this feeling can be turned against the United States. I have, Mr. Senator, here before me a note which General Noriega sent to the Embassy of Panama in Washington, in which Noriega una serie de planteamientos makes a series of proposals, which I am going to read three or four, so that you could have an idea of how Noriega tries to trick in the United States. Orlando, let me just ask you, would you identify what it is you're reading from? This is a document from the Defense Forces of Panama, the headquarters, February of this year, and it states, and where did the document come from? It comes from the Defense Forces of Panama and was sent to the Embassy of Panama in Washington. So it was received by Ambassador Sosa prior to the removal of De Valle. is that accurate? Thank you. Yes, and it was sent after the Dime of Miami. Now, views of General Noriega regarding the uh, laws of the United States, Noriega states. I do have evidence, proof, that politicians of the United States of America have been uh, supporting lawyers, politicians of Panama involved in uh, drug trafficking, and I shall demonstrate this when it is appropriate. I do have proof of the political manipulation of the government of the United States regarding drugs, regarding the laundering of money, arms traffic which go to the uh, Latin American countries. I do have proof, Noriega says, that while the government of the United States should be concerned by the human rights in Central America, it has not protected the brothers in Guatemala from the invasion of uh, drug traffickers in that country in which there had never been uh, marijuana and uh, cocaine processing 
and poppy plantations. Yo sí tengo la prueba, dice Noriega, I do have the proof, says Noriega, that the lying policy against drug of the United States has not protected our Honduran brothers from the invasion of cocaine, which is brought from Honduras to the United States, leaving ports which are just a few kilometers from the mil U.S. military bases which are located in Honduras. Mr. Plando, let me just ask you to go a little bit slower so we can all follow you more easily. Thank you. I do have, Noriega says, I have proof that the policy of the government of the United States shows itself to the world as a protector of drugs, leaving uh, abandoned its Latin American allies. And thus we see how Costa Rica has been converted to drug trafficking. I should like to submit this for the records. I've read some of the points, but what calls jumps out is that General Noriega says that he has proof, proofs, evidence of the involvement of governmental authorities in the United States, of drugs in Guatemala, in Honduras, and in Costa Rica. Now that document makes no mention of the involvement of Noriega with Cuba. No hace mención tampoco Nor does it make any mention of its involvement with the Medellin cartel. Por mi conocimiento de Noriega, to my este knowledge of Noriega and this problem, I have no doubt that Noriega has some proofs of that sí sabe de ese because he is well aware of this problem of the drugs. Let me interrupt you for one second if I can. Ambassador Sosa is in the audience here somewhere. Uh, am I correct, Ambassador Sosa? Uh, is this... Uh, well, I will ascertain that later from you if I can. Uh, as to this document, but I will uh, uh, place this in the record as exhibit. Did you have the consecutive number? Uh, this will be exhibit number one in the second series of uh, hearings, and it will be so marked. And we will proceed uh, to uh, verify the authenticity of this at a later date. Let me ask you a question, though. Excuse me, sir. In submitting this document, what I wish to say is that the concern which we Panamanians have is that they're trying to trick or to confuse U.S. public opinion. Later on in this hearing, I shall present evidence of how Fidel Castro also is trying to confuse uh, U.S. opinion. But there is a fact in this past uh, week's discussion which really uh, jumped out to us, and that is the lack of knowledge, the deep lack of knowledge in military circles of the United States and of the intelligence circles of the United States regarding the realities of the Panamanian Defense Force. They have operated on the basis... What do you mean by realities? When I refer to realities, I refer to the fact that the relationship uh, with the defense forces have been exclusively with Noriega and with certain other officials in the relationship. And what is the impact of that? The impact of this is that there has been created uh, almost a, as a truth that the change of Noriega will introduce a lack of uh, a level of uncertainty and that there are no officials in the defense forces in Tumana to uh, substitute for Noriega, which is completely false. Mr. Chairman, so what you, let me just follow that. So what you are saying is that it is your perception there is a reluctance on the part of the American military to sever the tie with Noriega because they don't know what comes after? Is that the essence of what you've just said? That's a part of the problem, a very serious part. Well, I want to it is an error. I want to understand precisely what you've just said then. Could you reframe what your, your comment to us?
los informes the reports que la comunidad de inteligencia de los which Estados the Unidos intelligence community of the United States has con relación a la fuerza de regarding de Panamá, the defense forces of Panama son informes are reports muy superficiales which are very superficial They concentrate their attention on Noriega as the commander and a limited group of officials, of officers. This fact makes that any agency will be concerned regarding the future of the Defense Force because they do not know what will be the leadership which will succeed General Noriega. The danger of this, Mr. Chairman, is that in practice, más del 80% de los militares, military cada uno individualmente, es mejor que Noriega. Is than Noriega. En términos profesionales, in professional terms, y en términos humanos, and este human conocimiento, terms, this lack ignorado, this fact is, que las fuerzas the, armadas de Panamá, ignored the fact that the armed forces of Panama, cuentan con oficiales con capacidad have de relevar a Noriega officials who are capable of taking uh, Noriega's place and guaranteeing the dem uh, democratic Porque process because they're not involved with drugs further they have been professionally trained for such service en las conversaciones que hemos tenido la semana pasada which we had last week, es evidente it is clear es conocimiento this lack of understanding una seria falla. which I think is a very serious fault de las agencias de los Estados Unidos. Of the agencies of the United States. Let me ask you one other tough question, if I can. You had great access to General Noriega. Correct. You read almost all the intelligence documents during the 80s. Correct. And you have testified <coughs> significantly here as to General Noriega's involvement in money laundering and drugs and so forth. Is there any truth to any of the allegations made by General Noriega as to information he has about U.S. complicity in or involvement in or knowledge of? Is there anything that he has that could embarrass any of those people he cited in that document? Claro. Yes, indeed. And now, I've never asked you that question before, have I? Nunca. Never. Chairman? Yes. In pursuing both lines, the lines of questioning that you have uh, brought up, I'd like to put in the form of a question and a statement, Mr. Blandone, is it your opinion that some Panamanians have a feeling that the United States and particularly the Defense Department and the Intelligence Agency have not um, recommended more forceful action in dealing with Noriega because they are concerned that he has information that would prove embarrassing to them and to the United States. Well, General Noriega himself has stated that. You will recall, Mr. Senator, that the lawyers of Noriega, when they arrived in Miami from Panama, said that Noriega had shown to them proofs which could endanger and affect the elections of the United States. Personally, I believe that in the case of the Defense Department, the basic concern lies in what will be the succession because the intelligence information regarding the defense forces is very, as I said, is very limited. In addition, Noriega prepared reports which he sent to the United States against Panamanian officials who might be possible successors of him, linking them to leftist policies vinculándolo a posiciones extremistas. To Ese es el caso de los oficiales que hoy se encuentran en las cárceles por el golpe de Estado. 
brutalmente golpeados por la guerrilla de narcotráfico que está en el poder. Entonces, el grupo de tráfico de drogas que está en poder. Así que aquí hay un proceso, en este caso, y esto parece ser, también por las discusiones que tuvimos la semana pasada, que este es el problema principal. That is why we point this out as a very serious error, as is also the error of underestimating the effort of the Medellin cartel to subvert order in our countries and to overestimate la acción ideológica del comunismo. Because what has happened in practice. Mr. Chairman, I think it's, it's worthy of note at, at this point to take this opportunity to, again, reinforce, I think, what Mr. Blandon has indicated as what has been, over a period of time, the cry of the Defense Department and others and people from the National Security Council to this senator personally. Who's going to take Noriega's place? Now, that has been stated to this senator directly from vet rather high officials in these agencies on more than one occasion and i think it's the attitude that permeated and i would hope that it has changed recently i hope that it has changed but i but i wonder if it really has and i point out something that should not be lost in the translation of what mr blandone has indicated because for far too long not only have we heard that cry but we've also had anyone who comes forward or the possible majors and colonels within the defense establishment and outside painted as leftist, painted as communist, painted as very real and more substantial threats to the United States and its interests than Noriega. And nothing could be further from the truth in most cases. They are those people who have leadership capabilities and qualities that Noriega has seen to denigrate and we have right within the Defense Department or people on contract to the Defense Department who seem even at this time bent on carrying that kind of message and those distortions. And so it must send a terrible signal to the opposition in Panama when this is coming through continually. But I think it's rather important that we not lose sight of the fact that so many who are capable of leadership and taking it up have, have been actually painted as as people who would pose a greater threat by someone who himself today has actively been promoting the interest of uh, the Cubans, the Soviets, the leftists within, and maybe it has taken these final acts within the last several weeks of a man of desperation to wake us up to the distortions that one Nestor Sanchez seems to have created over a period of time. Nestor Sanchez being a, an individual who up to rather recently worked directly for the Defense Department and may or may not be on contract at the present time and who seems to, uh, uh, to still uh, be in a position to leak out information uh, when the Defense Department meets with a group of majors who come from uh, Panama to attempt to give to the Defense Department information as to how they could use it. I, I'd like to just, just be supportive of what I think um, uh, Mr. Blandone has made in the way of a very comprehensive analysis. And I'd leave with one further thought, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, as it relates to this. Blandone, do you believe that the Defense Department, the, the people here, our Defense Department, are speaking to sufficient, a sufficient breadth enough Panamanian people to get the, the correct analysis or are they still continuing to to be wed to the to their 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 old their old system have they have they do they speak to sufficient uh, Panamanian people in your view to get a more accurate picture of what the situation is and who could uh, who could fill the power vacuum within the Panama defense forces <clears throat> from the information of last week, Mr. Senator, I think that for the first time, officers of the Department of Defense of the United States were had, had the opportunity to discuss with another group of officers, Panamanian officers, regarding other realities, other facts. 
Pero de nuevo... But, once again... El esquema que se ha, se ha planteado a Panamá. The scheme which has been raised in Panama is a very rigid one, too rigid. En el des en el no querer reconocer el in not wishing to recognize the error, the in they insist on the error, continuing it. Mencionó, And now that you have mentioned a Néstor Sánchez, yo quisiera expresar uh, Néstor Sánchez, I should like to state something which concerns us. El año pasado, Last year, Can I, can I, before you do, I want to come back to Nestor Sanchez, but I want to identify him a little more for the purposes of the, this particular hearing. Um, and before we do that, if I can interrupt you, uh, I would like the record to show that the lawyers for General Noriega, through his lead attorney in Florida, Mr. Neil Sonnet, were asked two weeks ago for any evidence that might document what was asserted in the document put forward today by Jose Blandon. Secondly, <coughs> I join <coughs> Senator D'Amato in underscoring what Jose Blandon has just said about potential replacements. The intelligence on which our judgments have been based is fundamentally, fundamentally, not exclusively, but fundamentally intelligence which has been fed over the years through General Noriega himself. So he has created really the pages of files on potential replacements. And uh, this is a point which Jose Blandon made last time, but I think in view of the current debate and administration position, uh, it's even more important today to understand that than it was before. Now, Mr. Blandon, would you please uh, re-identify, if you will, who Nestor Sanchez is? With what? Nestor Sanchez. Who is he? Identify him, please. Nestor Sanchez <coughs> worked first with the CIA for various years and then in the Defense Department as an assistant for Latin America of the Defense Department. At the present time, he is part of the Panama Canal Committee on one of the committees uh, and I understand when was he is an advisor recently he was assigned to the Panama Canal Commission he is a man who has been in continual relationship with uh, General Noriega for a number of years his knowledge of the uh, defense forces is limited to those areas And you know him to be somebody who has continued to have, even at this moment, input with respect to defense perceptions on the Noriega situation? I was saying that last year, Mr. Nestor Sanchez had a meeting with Aquilino Boyd. Aquilino Boyd is Uh, close to Noriega, who was named by the non-constitutional uh, government of Obama as Ambassador of Panama to the United States. And in those discussions, Aquilino Boyd discussed with Nestor Sanchez the future of the Defense Forces of Panama. On the basis that if Noriega left, la pirámide de mando the, de la Fuerza de Defensa de Panamá. Uh, uh, command la pyramid would uh, fall de down de Panamá. Panamá. Now, the Armed Forces of Panamá, Panamá was going to put uh, Panamá then in the hands of the communists. Now, with this simplistic idea, that's what he's been operating on. Ellos discutieron eso. They discussed this. En esa época, because at that time, yo estaba en Nueva York, I was in New York, and Aquino Boy discussed this with me and with Ritter, Ambassador Ritter, Ritter of the UN, Nacional. the Panamanian ambassador Esto to the UN, discussed this problem. Mr. Chairman, um, I believe that a, a meeting took place this past uh, Saturday, a week ago Saturday on March 25th, where a number of uh, officers in the Panamanian Defense Department met at the uh, Pentagon with the Defense Department officials to discuss the implementation of various opportunities or methods by which Noriega could be uh, exited or moved or removed. 
News of that meeting apparently leaked out and was made available in Panama. And I'd ask Mr. Blandone if that is not correct, if he did not hear that there were meetings that taken place with our Defense Department, with the PDF members, or PDF officers, and uh, I understand that uh, Mr. Sanchez was seen in the Pentagon lobby at the time of this meeting. Are you aware of that? Yes, I discussed this with Mayor, and he said that when they were in the Defense Department, he said hello to Nestor Sanchez. This was Saturday, the day that you mentioned, and Sunday. In the, uh, in, no, this came out on Sunday in the Panamanian papers that they had met with uh, defense officials in the United States. Who provided the leak, I don't know, but this is what happened. Is there any additional information you can tell us about the relationship between Nestor Sanchez and uh, General Noriega that you, that you haven't told us? It is obvious that they have a good friendship. And that he has discussed this thesis of the high command and the collapse of the leadership of the defense forces. And he has put this out as though it were true. Now, unless Senator D'Amato wants to pursue that, I want to move back into the Medellin cartel. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, Senor Presidente, I want to just reemphasize something, and I'm not going to bring it uh, public at this point. But I think unless the uh, Defense Department begins to look into the relationship with Nestor Sanchez and that which he did have with Noriega and the fact that, that when this kind of meeting takes place, at this critical juncture, and it's a meeting that I wasn't aware of, Mr. Chairman, but somehow it finds its way, that information finds its way in, in Panama, that that's rather distressing. And the fact of the matter is that maybe they should look a little closer into what the relationship with Nestor Sanchez and Noriega has been and continues to be, and what maybe Noriega has, what information that might be rather embarrassing to Nestor Sanchez that Noriega has, and what influence he still may exercise. And I think it's a rather serious matter. And it disturbs this senator to think that we're still operating on the premise and the basis of information that flows through this individual. And the fact that he just so coincidentally turns up uh, uh, at the time that this meeting has been held. And the fact that this information gets back, that these officers have met with the Defense Department people to Noriega. And uh, I, for one, I uh, think that it's a rather disturbing situation. And I think it's a rather myopic point of view that still persists and exists. And for the life of me, I can't understand how this, uh, how this philosophy of just l wait for things to take place and things may get better, when indeed we have information, Mr. Chairman, that later I'd like to share with you that, that may lead to a situation where upwards of a hundred plus million dollars may be transferred in the, in, in the hours and weeks and days ahead in cash money to, to, to Noriega. And I wonder how that situation will play out if he's given that infusion of dollars and how much longer and what the people of Panama will, will do. And I, I'd, I'd like to ask one other question because after all, Jose Blandon is an operative, an intelligence operative with many, many years experience understanding the psychology of the Panamanian people probably better than anyone we have access to. Mr. Blandone, in your opinion, if the situation persists and Noriega is able to continue in power for the next three or four weeks, how will the Panamanian people, will there begin to take place a shift in the sentiment of the Panamanian people against the United States as a result of the fact that, that they have been led to believe uh, that uh, he would be out a long time ago and they have endured so much in the way of sacrifice, personal, uh, political, economic, etc. Do you think that's a danger? 
Usted recordará, senador. You will recall, senator. Que en la ocasión que nosotros conversamos en Nueva York. That when we spoke in New York. Yo le expresé que en el mes de marzo. I told you that in March. The Noriega government would enter into a general crisis. Como efectivamente está. As indeed is the case. Yo le puedo asegurar. But I can assure you that if Noriega remains in power. En las próximas cuatro semanas, for the next four weeks, Noriega, va a destruir Noriega el sistema económico will Panamá. destroy the Panamanian economic system. Y la destrucción del sistema económico and the Panamá destruction of the Panamanian economic system will bring in its wake a la poderosa clase media que nosotros hemos construido massive en el país. exit of the powerful middle class Panamá, that we have forged in the country. Ahora mismo hay filas there are long lines in Panama right now to obtain passports and visas to come to the United States. The Panamanian economy is conceived of so as to make use of our geographic location. 75% of the income of the Panamanian government of Panama comes from services. If Noriega is able to destroy the financial system and establishes a national currency, the Panamanian economic system will be changed. And later, I will explain how Cuban intelligence has been manipulating this problem so as to come to such a juncture. So that the next four weeks are very clearly decisive for Panama. The United States decides to wait. The dangers that the United States will run in terms of its strategic security and the risk or the danger in terms of public opinion being turned against the United States is very great. Mr. Blandone, I want to try to proceed through a number of other <coughs> key areas. We have a great deal to cover a lot of witnesses and unfortunately not as much time as we would like. Uh, in previous testimony, <clears throat> you told us that General Noriega had a relationship with other military intelligence officials throughout the region. Did he have a relationship with the Honduran military intelligence? Yes, of course. Uh, can you describe for us who Colonel Torres Arias is? Colonel Torres Arias, Colonel Torres Arias was a Honduran intelligence officer. He was head of the G2, which is the military intelligence of Honduras, and he was changed at the end of 81, the end of, uh, beginning of 82. And what was his relationship with General Noriega? <coughs> Torres Arias was eh, initiated by Noriega. Arias, por Noriega was, begun, was initiated to arms trafficking and drug trafficking by Noriega. And on two occasions he visited Havana and he met there with Castro and with members of the FMLN to coordinate the shipment of arms through Honduras. At what period of time did General Noriega and Torres Arias uh, enter into a business relationship? En el mismo momento At the same time que el cartel de Medellín that the Medellín cartel was formed, you shall should recall that the Medellín cartel was formed at the beginning of the 1980s como una respuesta as a de los response de la droga on the part of the Colombia, drug barons in Colombia a la amenaza que representaba to the threat el represented by the M19 Y a la necesidad de tener una estrategia and the need to have a coordinated strategy para su to increase their business. Desde ese periodo, From that time, el de Medellín, when the Medellin cartel was formed, with a clear strategy, with resources, not only financial resources, humanos, but also human resources, hay la a because there's a tendency to think Medellín, of the Medellin cartel como gente y rudas. as a very crude murderers. Pero detrás de ese cartel, but behind this cartel, there's a whole technical team, economists, economists financiers, financiers e inve, eh, gente de inversión, in investment experts, que esa fabulosa suma de dinero, who manage these tremendous quantities of money. De que una organización, now, when, let me just interrupt you there quickly. When Ramon Rodri uh, Milian Rodriguez testified, 
he sat there and he said to us, Senators, you don't understand. These people control whole industries. Industries. Is that accurate? Of course, not only industries in Panama, they controlled a bank, a bank the Inter-American Bank. This was owned by a member of the cartel, not the Medellin cartel, but of Cali. Cali cartel. Gilberto Rodriguez Orihuela. He controlled 51% of that bank. And yeah, let me come back for a second, because I want to try to be very precise here. What... To the best of your recollection, and if you don't remember, tell us you don't remember, but approximately what year did this relationship uh, with Colonel Arias begin with General Noriega? In 1980. Now, the nature of the business you have described <coughs> as being narcotics and arms, is that the totality of it? It began with arms business first, arms trafficking. When did it move into narcotics? In 1981. Were there other Honduran military officers or officials involved? After Torres Arias, you mean? Yes. Well, even at the same time, was Torres Arias alone in his effort, or was he, was he joined by others? No, he worked with Colonel Bowden, who controlled one of the most powerful units of Honduras. It was the type of relationship that you see now in Haiti, just as that which also began with Noriega, and the boss is very important. Or the pattern, rather, the pattern. El cartel the cartel chooses the highest level Noriega official working Noriega or officer working in the agency. So Noriega was G2. Torres Arias, Torres Arias was G2. Boden, controlaba una de los Boden controlled más one of the most powerful Honduras. units of Honduras. En Haiti, in Haiti, el coronel involucrado, the colonel who is involved el más poderoso. is the most powerful officer. Y el cartel and the cartel, which has better intelligence information about the officers than the U.S. intelligence agencies, has a better system of recruitment. And from that moment, it is from that moment in 80 and 81 that the Medellin cartel expanded. And beginning in 1983, when its true expansion began, before you go to the expansion, what was Colonel Budin's unit? Which unit? El Batallón Blindado, no recuerdo el nombre. The uh, Armed Vehicle Battalion, I don't remember the name, that's based in Tegucigalpa. And is he still an active uh, duty no. officer in Honduras? No, ellos no son activos. Ellos fueron retirados cuando... No, they are not active. They were retired when General Alvarez came to power in 1982. Was there any specific reason stated for their retirement at the time? Because the Honduran intelligence agency and U.S. intelligence agencies perceived uh, this information about the meetings with Castro, with Torres Arias, and you'll recall that I informed in the last hearings, that when we received the information that the information had filtered into Honduras about Torres Arias and uh, Bowdoin's travel to Cuba, Noriega passed this information on to the U.S. intelligence agencies. Did they ship weapons to the rebels in El Salvador? Of course. You say of course. Por uh, supuesto. Do you know that or do you say of course because everybody no. did it? No, porque todo mundo lo sabía, no. Be porque, eh, Noriega coordinó because en Noriega Panamá, coordinated meetings in Panama con la dirección del Frente Farabundo Martí, with the directorate of the Farabundo Martí Front de de to armas, establish two routes for Salvador. arms supply to El Salvador. Una por abajo en el Golfo de Fonseca, One through, un, uh, beneath, in the, through the Gulf of Fonseca and another in the north of Honduras, which was called the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Eso fue discutido por Torres Arias y Boden, this was discussed by Torres Arias in meetings in Panama. Do you attend any of those meetings? A las dos reuniones yo atendí. I attended both two meetings, both meetings.
Can you describe to us who is uh, Mata Ballesteros? Mata Ballesteros is a drug trafficker who is originally Colombian, who is currently in Honduras. Did uh, Mata Ballesteros have a relationship with Noriega? Not that I know of. What was his role in Honduran drug trafficking? Can you, can, can you bring the mic down a little bit? Good, thank you. Mata Ballesteros is a multi-billionaire. Multi Different estimations Different estimates indicate that his uh, fortune is greater than $1 billion. You could imagine the degree of influence that he has in Honduras. Is he the same Mata Ballesteros who was wanted by, uh, for the prosecution uh, in the murder of the DEA drug agent uh, Camarena? El mismo. Yes, it's the same one. So this wanted accused murderer, alleged murderer, who is one of the richest men in Honduras, is yes, currently under indictment for murder of an America of a DEA agent, is currently sitting in Honduras at the moment with impunity. Is that correct? Correcto. Yes, it is correct. And do you know how long he has been there? No, no, sé. no I don't know. Who in the Honduran military picked up the drug business after Torres Arias, if you know? You mean when Torres Arias left the armed forces? Yes. The problem, Senator, is that with all the operation being carried out in 83 and 84 in Honduras, military support against Nicaragua created natural conditions Para actividades ilícitas. For illicit activities. Now, are you talking about the supply effort to the Contras in 83-84? Exactamente. Exactly. Well, apart, apart from the natural opportunities that it afforded, do you personally have knowledge of Honduran involvement subsequent to Torres Arias in uh, drug trafficking? Después de, del, en Panamá había evidencias de eso. En Panamá there were indications of that. Pero no evidencias que me permitan. But señalar. not indications that. Involucramiento de. Or evidence that would allow me to indicate direct involvement. Let me ask you this question: Was there an involvement, to your knowledge, in drug trafficking by the Honduran Navy? No. De no. Armada, se refiere a. You refer to the aim to the. Ejército o a la. Navy or the army. Uh, the Navy. A la Navy. 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 No, no, no tengo ese conocimiento de eso. No, I do not have knowledge of that. Do you know who Hector Aplicano is? Sí. Yes. Could you describe to us who he is? Es un coronel de la Fuerza Armada Hondureña. He is a colonel of the Honduran Armed Forces who was discharged in 1986. Do you know whether or not he was involved with drug smuggling while he oversaw the Contra supply efforts in Honduras? No tengo información de que I do not have information that he was involved in drug trafficking. I do know that he was the link between, entre la contra y el between the Contras and the Honduran army. Do you know a Honduran officer named Captain uh, Luque? Have I pronounced that correctly? 
Es correcto. Luke era el operativo That's de right. que Luke estaba encargado también del mismo trabajo. Luke was the operative who was involved in the same work. Well, what do you mean, involved in the same work? Él trabajaba con Aplicano en el suministro. He worked with Aplicano in supplying uh, the Contras. And he worked at the, at the uh, airstrips that were used for resupply, is that correct? Correct. Yes, it is correct. Now, at some time, did Cesar Rodriguez tell you that uh, drugs were going through those strips? Cesar Rodriguez? Cesar Rodriguez? Cesar Rodriguez utilizaba la pista de Costa Rica. Cesar Rodriguez used the airstrip in Costa Rica? Essentialmente. Basically. But you told us sometime previously that Cesar Rodriguez told you that uh, those airstrips in Honduras were being used also for the transshipment, is that correct? Correcto. Lo que he dicho que principalmente yes, what I Cesar said was that Cesar Rodriguez mainly Panamá, used when he left Panama the airstrips in Costa Rica. He also made stops in Pero Honduras, but mainly he operated from Costa Rica. Do you know whether or not trafficking through Honduras has continued up until the present time? No tengo información. I do not have information in this regard. And can you tell us the circumstances of the visit of Torres Arias and, uh, and uh, Bodin to Cuba? La visita de Torres Arias y Bodin en Cuba que fue Torres Arias and Bodin's travel to Cuba, which was on two occasions, de la necesidad de re occurred by virtue of the need to resupply armamento más específico more specific arms al movimiento del FMLN. to the FMLN movement. Y para establecer una relación con and to establish con Castro, a relationship with Castro's personnel de manera de avalarlos con los guerrilleros en El Salvador. So that they would be trusted with the vis-a-vis -vis the guerrillas in El Salvador. What was General Noriega's role in that? Ellos salieron con destino a Panamá. They went to Panama. Y teóricamente estaban en Panamá. And theoretically they were in Panama. Y en un avión de la Fuerza Armada Panameña fueron a La Habana. And an armed forces plane of the Panamanian Armed Forces took them to Havana. And that's the totality of his role? En términos de la, de la, del arreglo de su visita, sí. In terms of arranging the visits, yes. But, the, but General Noriega had a business relationship with them with respect to the results of that visit, is that correct? Ah, claro. Of course, Después, yes. Eh, a través de la red de suministro de armas Later, after the resup arms resupply network that Noriega had, en la que conseguían armas in which they obtained arms from d in different countries, con la red de Cesar Rodriguez with y la the red network Arari, of Cesar Rodriguez and the red of Aria, de armas. they continued the arms supply. Now, Mr. Blandone, you told me also on a number of occasions in my office as we discussed this that the clandestine network of airstrips which were used for the Contra supply, that is to say, both in Costa Rica as well as in Honduras, were also used extensively by drug traffickers. Is that accurate? Same airstrips? Please repeat the question. You said to me, on a couple of occasions in my office, as we discussed this, that the airstrips, the clandestine network, the secret network of airstrips, which were used for Contra supply, were also used extensively for drug trafficking. Hay una información que quisiera... There is some information that I would like to set forth, Senator. Por la existencia because of the de una nueva evidencia más contundente insistence of a more convincing evidence que liga a la red de los Arari links the Arari red, uh, the Arari network con respecto a todo esto with respect to all of this por razones de que ese okay, now, when you say you're going to lose some people here when you say the Horare, you're talking about Mike Horare, is that correct? si me refiero al ciudadano sí, me ref israelita I, yes, I'm referring to the Israeli citizen 
que tiene negocios con Noriega en Panamá, que formó una serie de compañías Panama, para el contrabando de armas, companies for arms contraband para from smuggling arma to supply arms a Centroamérica y a la contrarrevolución the contra y que además esos mismos aviones se usaban para otras cosas moreover, pero el hecho de que when you say other things what do you mean droga drugs and when you say the Harare network what is the Harare network la, de, la red de Harari es una red que se estableció con ciudadanos israelíes, israelí panameños y panameños y U.S. ciudadanos para armas de supply purposes. ¿Cuándo fue esto formado? En 1982-83. En 1982-83. Trabajó hasta 1986. ¿Dónde se funcionó? Desde Panamá. ¿De Panamá? ¿Qué países se involucró con el país? Quisiera pedirle a el presidente like que to ask Mr. Chairman, este tema eh, se ha discutido de forma cerrada porque in a, that this be discussed hay un testigo in a way because a witness que está pendiente de una serie de trámites who is still y que conversamos con, con nosotros measures, y ayer. We, we, I spoke with him yesterday, preferiría que esto sea manejado eh, en una sesión cerrada primero. Dealt with in a closed session first. Mr. Blandone, let me, I'm going to, we will agree to do that. We will do that in a closed session, and I understand why, and I, and I think it is important, but I want to do it immediately in closed session, not this moment, this instant, but within the next few days. Is that agreeable? Si. Yes. Before we move off this subject, I want to ascertain for the public record, without any question, Uh, that this involves that there is a direct linkage that you're aware of of the private network that the Sorari network and these airstrips in which guns would go in one shipment and drugs would come out in another is that accurate correcto yes and on some occasions drugs just went in and out on their own That's also accurate, is it not? Correcto. Yes. We will pursue the names uh, and the particular individual that I'm aware of and staff is aware of, and we've already been in touch with them, as a matter of fact, so we will uh, pursue that in closed session and uh, move into another area. Uh, When General Noriega took over the government from President de Valle, actually formalized his takeover in a public way, uh, at that time, at the beginning of uh, the month, the Japanese government decided to approve the new government installed by Noriega. Uh, and. Uh, At that point, uh, we began our economic sanctions. Uh, has there been a relationship between General Noriega and Japan that we should be aware of? Well, historically, well, historically the Republic of Panama maintains excellent Japan. relations with the government of Japan. Desde la época From the time del General Torrijos, of General Torrijos y el General Noriega, obviamente, and General Noriego obviously inherited those good relations. Los intereses de Japón en Panamá son Japan's muy importantes interests in Panama are very significant y lo van a hacer en el futuro. at present and they will be so in the future. Por razón de ser Japón 
because Japan is a net exporter of commodities and our status as a transoceanic route that is important for Japan. So the relations are very important and we, for Japan and we Panamanians are interested in cultivating that relationship. Now, I've been asked uh, by, uh, just take one minute here. I think uh, we will take a uh, 10 minute recess at this time, reconvene at uh, 20 minutes of. We stand in recess for 10 minutes.